And boy, we have a very, very busy show here today. So let's get right to it because it is July already. We have already passed the weekend, the Independence Day weekend. So we need to talk about what is in the latest edition of the Iowa History Journal. And to do that, we go right to the top. We have publisher Michael Swanger joining us right now. Hey, Michael. Good morning, Lou. Always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, a lot of stuff packed inside of the July-August issue of the magazine. Uh, let's first talk about the cover story because that is a heck of a picture on the cover of your magazine. Isn't that a great photo of Dazzy Vance? I'm glad you pointed that out. That's uh, one of those old wind-ups that you don't see anymore in the game, and uh, we we couldn't help but uh, to put that one on the cover. So, yeah, we're talking about Dazzy Vance as the uh, – uh, subject of our cover story for our new issue. And when people think about baseball players in Iowa, I sometimes think that Dazzy kind of gets overlooked. But, you know, he's a he blazed his way into the Hall of Fame with a legendary fastball that made him the strikeout king of the 1920s. And for seven years uh, consecutively, he led the National League in strikeouts from 1922 to 1928 with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And he went on to win 197 games. And what's so remarkable about that, Lou, is that he did so uh, after joining the major leagues, the big leagues, when he was 31 years old. He kind of floundered in the minor leagues for several years during his 20s with control issues. And so it's amazing that he accomplished what he did and won as many games as he did, uh, not getting his career launched until he was about 31. He was uh, born in Orion, Iowa, in Adair County, and then his family moved to Nebraska when he was a young child. And uh, he was so wild when he was pitching in high school there that they had to raise the height of the backstop. He was kind of like a, a nuke Lelouch from Bull Durham, uh, <laughs> you know, decades ago. But uh, when he, once he found his control and made it to the big leagues, he made it a, a tremendous uh, impact on the game. Um, in 1924, he was the NL MVP. He beat out the, the great Rogers Hornsby with the Cardinals that year, who hit 424, which is still the all-time single-season record for a batting average. So that was an amazing accomplishment. And then later on in his career, he got traded to the Cardinals and joined the Gas House Gang and won the World Series in 1934. But he was the first Dodger to be elected in the Hall of Fame in 1955 and just a great ball player. And again, I think sometimes he gets often overlooked. And uh, like so many subjects in our magazine, we, we wanted to pay him the, the tribute that we felt he deserved. Yeah, we understand there's some relatives in the Des Moines area, too, that found out we were talking about Dazzy Vance. And so they're really looking forward to seeing uh, what is inside the magazine, this issue. So that is really cool. So obviously they were want, want to grab a copy of this. What else do you have inside? Well, we also have a story about... Um, former slave and statesman Frederick Douglass, who spoke three times in Dubuque between 19, or excuse me, between 1865 and 1870. That's a tremendous story. We have another story about uh, local theater throughout the state of Iowa during the Great Depression, leading up to the Depression and in the early years of the Depression, and a company out of Fairfield that would produce local theater shows across Iowa in small towns and some big towns as well. And then we have another story about the Keokuk National Cemetery, which was very interesting to me. I didn't know much about it. Um, it's the only national cemetery in Iowa. It was founded in 1862 during the Civil War. And it's um, it, there's a great story by Don Doxey about the cemetery, who usually writes about sports for us, but he loves the Civil War. And uh, Keokuk was such a hub of activity during the Civil War. And by the war's end in 1865, about 80,000 Iowans had gone through Keokuk. And of course, during the war, um, as was the case with so many casualties and injuries, the uh, President Lincoln realized that they needed a place to bury the soldiers in Keokuk because there was so much activity on the Mississippi River and the Des Moines River with troop movement made the most sense to establish that cemetery. So that's another great story in, the, in this new issue. Right, and you have an article as well talking about the State Historical Society's Excellence in History Awards. Uh, that is an awesome article talking about the great things that happened in the state of Iowa and the articles that are associated with that. But uh, biggest question people have, if they don't already get it in their mailbox, can you still pick this up on the shelf? You can, you can get it at your local Hy-Vee or Fairway. In Des Moines, you can get it at Beaverdale Books. And of course, we always encourage people to visit iowahistoryjournal.com where they can pick up the new issue, they can subscribe, 
purchase a gift subscription or buy our collectible back issues. Yeah, I think that's really cool too. And uh, you also have some prints that you can get too. I saw that on your website earlier today too. So uh, check that out. So uh, that is really a neat thing. Uh, Michael Swagger, uh, publisher and owner of the Iowa History Journal. Great job as always. And we look forward to your next edition. And when that comes out, we definitely want to talk to you again. Looking forward to it, Lou. Thanks again. Take care.